Hi, welcome to the Resources Roadhouse. I'm Wally Graham and I'm at the 2019 New World Metals Conference here in Perth and I'm speaking with Tony Donaghy of CSA Global. Now, Tony, before we get down to the nuts and bolts and uh, things about what you're doing here today, can you just give us a, a quick uh, rundown on CSA Global um, as a company, what they are and what they sort of do? CSA Global is a mining industry consultancy. We cover the full spectrum of the front of operations, you might as well say, for, for the mining industry, from grassroots exploration right through to feasibility study. Uh, we have a team of uh, geologists, engineers, uh, some 200 professionals globally, uh, multiple offices around the world. And uh, recently we became part of uh, the ERM group, which is a environmental uh, re um, risk management uh, and uh, essentially all the ESG issues around mining. Uh -huh. And so we, we plug in very nicely with them. Uh, they deal with more of the back end operations of mining and how they have their community issues, uh, environmental issues, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, advising in that space. And so we plug into the front end of mining, so hopefully now within the organisation we're cradle to grave. In oh right. Uh, well, um, being involved in such a, like an aspect of the industry, I mean, I suppose, you know, as a company you have to be across, um, well, quite a few aspects of it. Um, hence what brings us to what you're doing here today. So um, you're going to be doing, giving a presentation on nickel, I believe, here at the conference. Um, uh, what nickel's up to at the moment, uh, what sort of uh, the impetus behind its uh, um, run at the moment. Um, I'd suggest it's probably got a lot to do with the electric vehicle market and the, or the uh, prospective exactly. electric vehicle market, but um, it's not my uh, <laughs> it's not my presentation, it's yours, so you might as well tell us what it is your, well, you've got to tell us. Nickel historically has been largely a tied to the stainless steel sector, so and, and particularly stainless steel in China. You know, the, the old axiom of China sneezed in stainless steel, the nickel caught Cold. Right, right. But moving into the future, the energy uh, options of nickel are moving far more into prominence and uh, projections as far as say 2030 means that the uses of nickel in the energy sector will rival the current uses of nickel in the stainless steel sector. Right. And that's going to be a significant boost to nickel markets and a significant change to the way that nickel is marketed and where nickel is sourced as well. Well, is it, well it was the famous quote from Elon Musk a couple of years ago, wasn't it, when he said that you know, lithium batteries, uh, they have more nickel in them than what they do yeah, lithium. The, the, so, the, yeah. the, the dominant metal by weight in all the preferred technologies in electronic vehicles is by far nickel, and yet see, that seems to be a very very undersold story in the energy metal sector. Yeah. Uh, it hasn't really achieved resonance yet. It's starting to at the moment, uh, but in, in the near future, uh, all discussions around nickel will be around energy usage far more than stainless steel, I should imagine. Right, and as uh, yeah, we, we were chatting before we, we went on air here, and uh, uh, the the electric vehicle market, um, that is, a, uh, well, as I was just saying before, an impetus behind uh, you know, the rise in nickel of late. Um, just, you know, the interest in nickel is because of its use in the electric vehicles, you know, and, and yes. how's that going to pay out? And um, you look at the even conservative projections of uh, electric vehicles, say, um, by, nine, by 2030, for instance, it's estimated that something like 14% uh, of all vehicle sales globally will be electric vehicles, and the market share of electric vehicles globally at that stage, so the wheels on road, will be something on the order of 230 million electric vehicles globally. And the, and the rise in take-up is a, a relatively exponential curve. Yeah, well, we have been, uh, well, I suppose, a little bit slow over here to um, take yeah, up the, the electric this, this, this is a market that's already well underway in yeah. Asia and China in particular. Uh, yeah. the, the, the dominant sales in the previous year of electric vehicles globally has been in China. Yeah. And uh, that's because uh, a lot of regimes in Europe and in uh, China are starting to legislate now around carbon emissions. And, uh, and in the US is starting to move that way as well in jurisdictions like California. And so it is actually legislated and mandated that a certain percentage of sales in certain vehicles on the road by X date have to be electric. Yeah, oh, okay. So, and um, other factors uh, within the nickel market at the moment? Um, we have seen some recent price rise in nickel, but that's been more to do with the uh, speculation on the Indonesian ban. Okay, yeah. But if you start looking at the price forecasts out to 2025, 20, 2030, uh, we are going to see a significant boost in base price of nickel on LME. And uh, for various factors um, around the type of nickel that is required for the electric vehicle market, the, the, the high purity nickel, class one nickel, and nickel sulfate, which goes into battery cathode, could well be trading at a premium well above LME prices for nickel to guarantee supply for various facilities and factories building the batteries. Right, yeah. and of course, you know, as we know, you know if uh, anybody sort of any market pundits are out there having a look, you now there's plenty of uh, junior exploration companies 
busy out there at the moment, uh, focused on nickel. There's, there's quite and, and, a, and that's yeah. that's the factor at the moment that really has been underplayed in the market as yeah. we see it, is that uh, given the typical lead time of mining operations, to meet that supply in 15 years' time means that discovery needs to be happening now. And we're not seeing the investment going into nickel exploration at the present moment, aside from a few uh, of the majors, like Independence Group, for instance, are throwing the book at nickel exploration at the present yeah, time because yeah. they recognise the, the growing demand. So, so if we are to fill the supply gap that's potentially coming, particularly in the high purity class one nickel, which nickel sulphide is naturally amenable to producing, then the exploration for nickel sulphide ore deposits to re to guarantee that supply and and to replace aging operations around the world that are starting to come offline, is needs to happen right now. Okay, all right, Tony. Well, thanks very much for joining us here at the Roadhouse this morning. It's uh, always interesting. It's always good to catch up, and uh, actually, we'll be, it's going to be very interesting to sit in and listen to your presentation later on. So. Tony Donny, thank you very much. And Wally, thank you for having me on. Cheers.